Hall of Manhattan Community College for tonight's championship matchup featuring the Queensboro Community College Tigers taking on the Bronx Community College Broncos. This is David Russell along with Joe Massey. The Queensboro Tigers about to take on the Bronx Broncos for the 2013 CUNY Championship. Queensboro beat Hostos in overtime the other night. Bronx took care of BMCC fairly easily. What will be the key to beating Bronx for the first time this season? Well, you know, David, I don't think there's any one key, so to speak. I think what Queensboro needs to do is come out with an effort that somewhat, I don't know if they could get it to the level of the other night, somewhat matches what they did the other night. They came out and they literally showed Hostos, we're not to be taken lightly. And they had Hostos playing back on their heels the whole first half. And then Hostos, the real fine team that they are, hung in the game, made a run at them, you saw what happened. We saw what happened. It was an amazing finish, and, uh, and Queensboro was able to hold them off. And now we'll get the uh, PA address. Get the uh, PA announcer to get the starting lineup. Stephen Jones, Herman Crump, and Adrian Allman. Starting for the Tigers at the guard position. Standing 5 foot 10 from Queens, New York, number 2, Carl Benjamin. At the forward position, standing 6 foot 5 from Queens, New York, number 25, Jordan. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask both 
teams to meet at center court for the traditional handshake of sportsmanship. Good luck, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, a nice round of applause for the Queensboro Community College Tigers and the Bronx Community College Broncos. Fans, make some noise! Tigers and Broncos getting ready to tip off the starting five for Queensboro. They'll have John Peloso, Chuck Sabunse, Jordan Chateau, Joseph Turner, and the hero from the other night, Carl Benjamin, who hit the game-winning three-pointer with a minute to go in overtime. How about that shot, Joe? You like that one? It, rims, it rolls around twice against the rim, then goes off the backboard and in. I like that shot, and I'm sure Coach Robert Holford enjoyed that shot going in. Uh, and, you know, as we said, it was just a, an amazing turnaround by this Queensboro club. You wouldn't expect him to hit a shot like that earlier in the year. But this is a different club right now mentally. I actually spoke to uh, BMCC coach Michael Kerr after that game. And I said, can you believe this is the same team that came here in November and turned the ball over 30 times? And he said, it's not the same team. It's the same players, but it's not the same team. By the way, the starting five for Bronx, Derek Fernandez, Ronald Washington, Rennell Ross, Berlin Guy Felix, and Jamal Celestin. Queensboro win the dark blue jerseys. Bronx looking for their third CUNY championship in a row. They're in the white. They're going to have to lock in again, David. This is a very athletic, big, squad for Bronx and the uh, Queensboro Tigers win the tip and we're off. Yes we are, it's Joseph Turner with the ball for Queensboro. And we'll see if they try to slow down the pace like they did against Hostos. Here's Peloso launching a three and it's good. John Peloso from downtown and the Tigers lead three nothing. Peloso who fashions those three pointers uh, he had had a streaky shooting time earlier in the year. He would be big if he can get on tonight. Celestin turnaround jumper is good, and it's 3-2. And a foul is called on Bronx. Quick foul on the Broncos. It should be on McQueen coming up. Well, it's Berlin Guy Felix with the foul. Here's Felix, because I thought it was number 20, but it was number 21. By the way, new coach for Bronx this year is trying to continue on the success they've had the past couple of years. That's not always easy. No replacing Shannon McKinnon, who won the two championships, including last year with 11 seconds to go against Hostos. As Benjamin has the ball, the hero of the last game. And Kelly has had a lot of success as a coach. He was an assistant under his father at Mercy College. Sean Kelly. Yeah. Well, Steve Kelly was, is, is his father and is now the athletic director of BMCC. Never heard of him. <laughs> Steve Kelly was actually joking with Robert Holford as Queensboro keeps the ball. He's in the second row on the right over there. Yeah, he was joking with Robert Holford after Tuesday night's win. First of all, you get here 20 minutes before game time, and then you send the game to overtime as Chateau is called for traveling, and the ball goes back to the Broncos. I was going to say, Sean Kelly's had success. He went to Bergen County Community College and won some regional championships, including an undefeated regular season at 30 and 0. Seems like a take charged kind of guy. And he is as the Broncos take the lead 4-3. And it's Derek Fernandez. Nice drive by Fernandez. They are gifted with some very fine athletes. Of course, Bronx had a tough time for many years in this conference before they started to turn it around. Denal, that's not really a shot, and it's an air ball. And now the Broncos are running. It's Fernandez. Nice pass. Now it's Celestin. Good ball movement. And Rennell Ross's jumper is good. Six points in a row for the Bronx, and the CUNY Player of the Year makes it 6-3. CUNY Player of the Year on the star of last year's championship game. Yes, hit the game-winning shot with 11 seconds to go to break a 59-59 tie. By the way, he the only returning player off that squad. 
see if uh, Queensborough can test that out at some point. And Queensborough turns it over right there. What Runs. I mean by test that out, <laughs> David, is when it gets into the uh, you know the the far reaches of the ball game, whether they can get Bronx to make some mistakes that uh, perhaps can turn the tide in their favor. There's a nice move to the basket. Can't finish. The tip in is good. It's Jamal Celestin and Robert Holford calls timeout. Eight nothing running. It's eight three Bronx. And Coach Holford having to call that timeout because the uh, Broncos have come out very inspired, getting to the boards. They're not blocking out Queensboro. And as we said, a lot of good athletes on this club. So you have to first shut off the lane, and then you have to get the rebound if you can. And uh, it's not going to be an easy win if they pull it off tonight. Uh, you look at Rennell Ross' season, he was 22nd in the country in points per game with 19, second in the country in rebounds per game with 13.4, and actually scored 14 points in the semifinal win against BMCC. In that game, Fernandez also had 14 points, but it was Ronald Washington who led the way with 30. And then you look at Queensboro's semifinal win, and their leading scorer was Ojugbele, who only had 12. Yeah, it was a team effort for sure. And they're going to need another team effort. Even the young man Chateau played as hard as I've seen him play. I mean, he was inspired the other night. So uh, that's, that's the type of effort they got. I believe Chateau took three or four charges by himself. As Olford's having a word with the ref. Uh, doing Queensboro as many years as we have, you know, you'll come out, you'll see players, they'll talk about a particular player, say this guy can do this or this guy can do that. You say, all right, we'll watch him and we'll see what he can do. Chateau didn't show us all that much. He could jam the ball, and, and a little light under the basket. But the other night, I thought he played such an impressive game. He was scrapping with those uh, Hostos forwards. And that's always nice to see. And Chris Aubrey, Troy Singleton, Dwayne Bridey, Eric Light, and Andre McFarland are now in for Queensboro. And Bronx forces a tie up and they'll get the ball on the alternating possession. Remember, they handled that press nicely against Hostos the other night. Bronx perhaps a little bit quicker in team speed, so they're going to have to move that ball quicker. How about Holford putting in a whole new five? Less than three minutes into the game, and a foul is called against Queensboro. Foul is charged to number 20, Eric Light. That's his first. Ronald Washington saw one side blocked up. He went over to the other side of the basket, tried to reverse it, got hit on the play. Ronald will go to the line. Averaged about 11 points a game for this club. Nine points in a row for the Broncos, and they lead by six. And Ojugbele is in for Queensboro, who grabbed a rebound when they were down 56-55 off a missed free throw, which saved their season. And it's 10-3 now as Washington hits both free throws, facing the press again and trying to break it. And they get it across half court. Ojugbele can't put it in. The tip in is good. Fella who was impressive the other night, the forward got in there and made the tip. Andre McFarland, who had six early points in the semifinal win against Hostos, uh, tipped the ball in off the OJ miss. He outreaches people. He has the arm extension. Here's Berlin guy Felix. Three pointed by Fernandez is short and rebounded by Ojugbele. Chris Aubrey to OJ. Overthrows McFarlane. Ball goes to the Broncos. Well, a turnover. We'll keep watch on those. Bronco ball. Uh, almost uh, three, we're three and a half in now. It's 10-5 on the scoreboard. Bronx. And the Broncos look to extend their lead. They try to work it inside and do. Now back outside. Going baseline and the shot is blocked. Quintmer shut it off on him. Now they sure did. It's Chris Aubrey, and he'll walk it up. And we'll see if Queensboro doesn't slow it down here. David, I thought the D keyed everything the other night. The defensive effort was amazing by Queensboro. They came out in a man defense and held Hostos to 21 first half points. OJ shot is long and light. 
touched it last. The ball will go to the Broncos. And also one thing you talked about King defensively, look at the host of scoring. Coachman had 25 points in 41 minutes. Brown had 18, White had 10, but then the rest of the team had eight combined. And already four Broncos have scored. Yeah, they forced Coachman to try to take that game in his own hands at one point, and he, <laughs> he nearly did. He made a turnover late in the game that hurt. Also missed a shot that could have won it at the end of regulation. That shot is good for the Broncos, and it's 13-5. Felix is now the fifth Bronco to score already. And a 13-2 run for the Broncos. Well, if Oscar Madison was here, he'd say, you did it again, Felix. <laughs> did anybody under 35 get that reference, Joe? Those shows still run. <laughs> oh, Jugbully to the basket and puts it in off glass. 13-7, five minutes in. Loose ball, it goes out of bounds to the Tigers. Make that basket, get back on defense, Queensboro. That's exactly what they did, and they forced the turnover. There's Aubrey with the ball, and he's facing some pressure. Ahead, Ojugbele, pass to Singleton, and Singleton can't finish. Broncos come away with the rebound. Singleton had the look. And now the Broncos, a nice dribbling back outside. Three-pointer is good. Rennell Ross from downtown, and it's 16-7. Broncos have come out firing. Broncos have come out hot. Here are the early going, hitting those threes now to extend that lead to nine. Let's see what Queensboro does here. Here's Singleton to Aubrey. Bounce pass, Ojugbele back outside. Aubrey swings it to Singleton. White, baseline jumper is long. Rebounded by McFarland and back outside to Aubrey who drives. And Aubrey is fouled off the dribble drive and he'll go to the line for two. Another good rebound by McFarland in there going to get the ball off the glass. Foul was on Ross on the impending drive and a good one by Aubrey. At one point it looked like David, he might pick up an offensive foul on that, but I think he just veered off enough to cause the contact to go the other way. You have to be smart when you get in that lane sometimes. All the time. Friendly roll at 16-8. Not if you're Charles Barkley or uh, <laughs> or King James, LeBron James, you know. <laughs> but LeBron has something better than intelligence. He has the referees. He has a little size, too. Yeah, that doesn't hurt either. 16-9 <laughs> as Aubrey sinks both. Doesn't help when you get all the star calls. You don't get that in college. I must say, he is a better ball player than I thought he would be. I have to uh, have to admit it. Expectations were high, and he probably surpassed those. I said he can't possibly match some of those, but he has. Broncos missed a three-pointer, and Queensboro has it. Trying to cut into the seven-point lead. It's Aubrey. Nice pass to McFarlane. And McFarlane puts it in. 16-11. And McFarland with four early points. Nice basket by McFarland. He was impeded. He just kept on going. He knew he had the arm reach to get it over the defender, and he did. Nice pass inside. Counted and the foul. Rennell Ross goes to the line to finish the conventional three-point play. All right, but Bronx just comes back, and they keep putting the pressure on you. That was a nice pass by Derek Fernandez, getting that ball in the low post under the basket, in fact, to... Ross and he scored and got fouled. They don't give you much time to set up defensively. I think the tough thing about the Broncos, they outscored BMCC in the semifinal game 44-24 in the paint. And then defensively, they held BMCC to 32% shooting. They were 10 for 40 in the second half and 0 for 7 from 3 and the Broncos will get it. McFarland just had a lapse because he thought the free throw went in and he went out of bounds to inbound it. All right, that's a that's a young man mistake and they're going to explain that to him. And you can't get on him too much about that. He just made a mistake. Nobody does go to the bench. It's enough of a mistake for Robert Holford. He's a very impressive uh, young player, though. He's done some good things. Yeah, he was 
He was good early against Hostos, the three early baskets he had. I think they need him tonight, too. I really do. It's a moving screen, which Queensboro needed right there. <laughs> I love when those moving screens come in at just the right time. <laughs> Foul is on Jamal Celeste in his first and the team's third. By the way, neither coach sits down much on those sidelines. <laughs> I don't think Holford ever sits down. There's Nolan Emery in the game for the first time. And the pass for Aubrey is wide and it goes to the Broncos. That pass was a skip pass and Aubrey was not really expecting the bounce on it and he couldn't field it. And here's Derek Fernandez. Ross at the top of the key. Bronx is down to 18 on the shot clock, and Ronald Washington kicks it out, and Felix is called for traveling. Yeah, David, because Greensboro did what they needed to do right there. They needed to get back and play tough defense, and that's exactly what they did. And they stopped a bit of momentum being built up by Bronx. Mm -hmm. That momentum uh, gets them a seven-point lead, then a, maybe a 10-point lead, you never know. Chateau couldn't finish the alley-oop. Defended well, but Emery takes it back out, and nearly traveled, and then turns it over. And now the Broncos were going to run good transition defense. Nearly a steal, but the Broncos come up with it. No basket, but an offensive rebound. And now Queensboro comes back away with it. It's Nolan Emery. Tigers going to work. Yeah. <laughs> Emery gets it back from Aubrey, and then Emery is called for traveling. Tried to slide to the right that time to avoid the oncoming defender who was number 21, Felix, and he did take a little bit of a step to the right. The Tigers trying to dig in defensively. That's where they need to tighten up right now, and they've done it the last couple of trips anyway. Here's a three-pointer. They don't do it on that trip. Nice jinx, Joe. 21-11, Broncos. Washington. Washington for three. I could only call them as I see them, Dave. <laughs> and there, right away, there was a breakdown, so Bronx took advantage of it. That's what they've been doing. Good defense, and he goes through the hands of Singleton, and the ball will go to the Broncos. I, Holford's going to try a couple of substitutions here rather than take a timeout. His team has become a little flustered, but... He's going to bring two new players into the game and try to smooth it out a bit. One of the things that helped him against Hostos was they jumped on the early. They were up by 11 at halftime, and now they're going to have to play from behind. Yeah. They weren't down by double digits yeah. at any point to Hostos. Well, I think the Cayman's biggest lead was five in that game. You have to give Bronx credit for that because yep. they jumped on Queensboro tonight. They've been an aggressive team, and they, look, they keep testing them. Nice pass inside, and Derek Fernandez puts it in off glass, and it's 23-11, and now Robert Holford calls that timeout. That one he needed because there yes. was another defensive breakdown. Nobody picked up uh, Fernandez inside. Easy basket. Hey, about four or five of these Bronco baskets have been uncontested layups. So, you know, he's got to go over some things with his players now about cutting off that lane. They've already given up more points in the first 8.53 of this game than they did the whole Hostos first half. By the way, how about this, to go back in the archives? Go ahead. The last time Queensboro won the CUNY championship was 2003 when they beat Hostos 81-64, a Cayman team coached by Robert Holford. Now that QCC team only had one player over 6-1. Right on this floor. Oh, man. And a young Robert Holford, by yes. the way. Not that he's old. No, but he was younger. Very young. Very young now. And Hostos was up by one at halftime. Queensboro outscored them 47-29 in the second half. You had Johan York, the MVP, who had 23 points and 12 rebounds. Remember, Dwayne Thomas had 26 yeah. points. Johan, the York Flyer, he could get up there. He had uh, he had those aircraft lifts on him. He was a playing over the rim sometimes. I, I, I go a little further with you, David. Queensboro made the finals in 207 and 209, but they lost. Mm -hmm. They lost to Manhattan and Kingsboro. Of course, in 209, they went under Larry Danzler. He got him here to the final. Was that Danzler? Yes, it was. was yeah, I, I, I believe. I think that was the year before he got there. I think that was the Atkinson year. It might have been Billy Atkinson. Yeah, because Danzler well, was here for three years. Yeah, maybe we'll check on that. One of the two, Atkinson <laughs> or Danzler. Singleton, nice drive to the basket, and it goes in. 
23-13. And to remember, and to uh, wrap up the 0-3 game, remember Junior Fuller was on that team. That's right. Another good one. Broncos looking to extend the lead. Good defense. Of course, they, Billy Atkinson, a assistant with Tom Sinnickson, a long time passed away a few years ago, unfortunately. Yeah. Broncos are down to eight on the shot clock, and they're nowhere close to the basket. Fernandez launches a three, and he banks it in. The bank is open for Derek Fernandez, and the Broncos have a 26-13 lead. Can't give him those open looks like that. Can't. Well, he was down to five. I mean, are you going to get right up on him, Joe? I mean, that was well, 26 feet away from the basket. Yeah, but you still have to locate where the ball is. I know, it's tough. I mean, you play defense for that long. And they're knocking down shots like that. And they've had a bit of trouble with the Bronx this year. They went into Bronx and gave up 88 points in a shellacking. They lost by 29. And then Bronx came into Bayside and won 69-52. You go down low to Chateau, and Chateau's hook shot is off. And the Broncos have it, and they're running again. A lot of good athletes on this uh, Bronx team. I mean, that little guard snatched that rebound there. And now Donald Thompson will go to the line for two shots. Ronald uh, Washington, number three, just went up on the defensive end, snatched that rebound out of the air, and headed down court with it. Uh, they have kept Queensboro moving. They, they, they've attacked, attacked, attacked. That's something Hostos did not do in the early going the other night, and that was a reason why they were in a hole. And they couldn't attack because Queensboro wasn't playing a zone, which you don't like to run against good shooting teams. As the free throw was good, and it's 27-13. Andre the way, speaking of free throws, uh, <laughs> this is a bit of a random stat, but the record for most free throws attempted and made in the CUNY playoff game is from that 03 championship game we spoke of. Queensboro was 32 for 42 from the line as Thompson splits the free throws. Turner back the other way from Queensboro. Singleton for three and it's good. Roy Singleton from downtown. It's 27-16. Good answer for the Tigers. A basket they needed. And Bronx they go right to the basket and make it 29-16. Nice move by Ronald Washington who now has seven points. Yeah, there's been no stopping the Bronx on this end here. Turner. Teams are trading baskets now. Joseph Turner has his first points of the game. 29-18. Queensboro guards have started to go to work. Let's see what they're able to do. Uh, a wide open court being run here by the Bronx. They are spread wide. They're looking for those one-on-one -on -one situations when they become available. Thought about another three-pointer, and now it's Sanchez to Thompson. We're down to seven on the clock. Washington has to launch it, and the three nearly went in. It's rebounded by McFarlane. Bronco got a hand on it. Turner back the other way. Drives to the basket, and he'll go to the line for two. Good defense by the Tigers. Uh, they were able to get the rebound head up court, and then Singleton. Teams going to the uh, to the lane and drawing the foul on that. Actually, that was Joseph Turner. Excuse me. He'll head to the free throw line. But that all made possible by the tough defense. They switched very well. Turner's first is good. It's 29-19. Turner had 10 points in the win against Tostos. Everybody has to get involved. Everybody. Oh, yeah. Turner splits the free throws. Rebounded by Ross. So they lost that game that they played in a few years ago with Gregory Steely. Yeah. Uh, they lost to a, a very good Kingsborough team. Mm -hmm. It was almost like this tournament where Queensboro was the number four and beat the number one ranked Tostos team. Down low and the foul is called. Broncos will go to the line for two. And then Queensboro faced the number three yeah. seeded team and you lost. Know, Kingsboro, they upset people because they played in the weeds for about four or five years. You'd look at them in the regular season. You think you could beat them. And then on the tournament, they turned out to be a better team and unbeatable. Yep. They had great athletes, strong guys. 
I did the games a couple of years over at York College. William Holly was one of them. First free throw is good. It's 30-19, and you know what you're going to get out of a Hassan Duncombe coach team, that tough man-to-man -to -man defense. A former Penn Quaker. Yes. And he could make you quake <laughs> because he was a tough guy. He, w he wouldn't take no guff on his team. Nice guy, yeah. but he wouldn't, he wouldn't let his team do very much that he didn't want them to do. Bronco split the free throws. He had a 44-point game against Navy and had a buzzer beater against Princeton, which lives in, <laughs> I guess, Princeton infamy and Penn made him a legend around those parts. That was, that was uh, really uh, magic time in that team's history. Turner scores again, it's 30-21. Tigers hanging around. And Sean Kelly calls timeout. They're hanging around. And a big shot again by Turner to get them to within nine. So you get it under double digits, and then you go back to work. What the Tigers have to keep doing, David, is hit the shot, get back. Hit the shot, if they hit it, get back. They failed to do that on several occasions, but uh, Coach Holford uh, wants them to keep doing that. That's what makes you a championship squad. You can't play one end of the court. So Sean Kelly calls the timeout with his team up nine. He's trying to become the fourth Bronx Bronco head coach to win a title. Shannon McKinnon won in 2011 and 2012. Steve DeMille won in 1991, and Vernon Haley won all the way back in 1988. And although they have a new coach in Kelly, their personality really hasn't changed that much. They, they're strong, they're aggressive, they're loaded with athletes, so uh, they give you a workout for 40 minutes. They sure do. We also had another good coach, remember John San Giorgio? Yeah. 98 Coach of the Year, and before that he played at Bronx and was Rookie of the Year and Player of the Year, even at a 62-point game against Kingsborough. And then they had lean years here yes. and uh, couldn't win many games in the conference. They had uh, very bad teams. So <laughs> over the last five years, they've really made quite a, a launching in this community college uh, system. And uh, I'm sure that's made everybody in CUNY happy because if you had one good team in the Bronx, you wanted another good one to uh, start a rivalry over there. Which they have. You like those rivalries. There's nothing like those rivalries. And Queensboro had one with Manhattan for many years. Manhattan and Queensboro's be big tilts. Maybe we'll have one with LaGuardia now. <laughs> Next year, a three-pointer is good. Wow. Nice play after the timeout as Rennell Ross is in double digits. 33-21 Broncos. Bridie answers back. It's 33-23. Bridie's first points of the game. Right off that timeout, as you said, Bronx came out, ran that play, got him behind the screen, and he knocked down the outside shot. They knew exactly what they wanted to do. And here's Ross again, lost the handle on it, but it stays with the Broncos with 22 on the shot clock. The one thing I would say Queensboro has done well so far, they've stopped the Broncos from running. Broncos outscored the Panthers 14-0 in the semifinal matchup in fast break points. The one thing they haven't done, though, is stop them on those backdoor <laughs> plays tonight. Well, the Broncos turn it over there, and Turner can't put it in. McFarland with the tip, no good. And now the Broncos are running. Good transition defense by the Tigers, though. And now with Sanchez. Had, had his pass tipped, and then O'Dougley may have gotten away with the foul. Turner going to the basket and lost a handle on it. And now the Broncos can come back the other way. He thought he was going to get fouled, and he let up. Nice pass, great team passing, and the Broncos go up by a dozen points. So unselfish. Donald and Donald Thompson makes it 35-23, the extra pass. Tough break there for the Tigers. They should have had two on that, or at least a foul, and it turns into two the other way. Now it's a 12-point okay. game. That's what basketball's all about, right? Those four-point swings. Could cut it to an eight-point game, and Turner loses a handle on it, and Thompson hits it the other end. Turner misses again. And the Broncos are running again. And I don't think Colford's going to give him a chance to miss any more of those. He's going to yank him from the oh, game. Well, the that three is no good. Well, it doesn't count, I should say. Was out of bounds, I believe. It's going to be, we're going to bring Aubrey back in the game. He's been buried for the majority of this game. He scored two early points off the bench. 
Actually, seven different Tigers have scored in this game. Probably doesn't make him feel too good right now. Aubrey. He's got Singleton in there also. Yeah, down low. OJ throws up a wild one, no good. But Eric White puts it in. Excuse me, it's Andre McFarlane. Uh, McFarlane is the wild card over there. He uh, can get to those loose balls, scoop them up. Get right there, big bat bucket or basket. I was gonna say bas bucket basket. I don't know what I was gonna say. 35-25, McFarlane with six points in the first half. He finished the game with six the other day. He's a, he's a good looking young player, he really is. Broncos are down to seven on the shot clock. Fernandez may put up another three. He said he works for a better shot, but couldn't hit it. Guess it was too close for him. Good, Aubrey running. Good box out by Aubrey there. Get that rebound. Here's Singleton in the corner. Singleton, Fernandez tried to get the hand in. Ojugbele throws up a wild one and there were nothing but white jerseys there for the rebound. Fernandez gets a nice pass inside and a good block by McFarlane. Loose ball, the Tigers come away with it. How do you like that McFarlane? He, he was beaten on that play, but his arms, as we said, are long, and he got back in behind him, made the block, but they turn it over. Offensive foul, a legal screen. Those are the toughest kind of fellas to play against, uh, David. When they have those long arms, you just can't gauge where to get the shot up from. Tough, that's the second foul on McFarlane, and Holford. Another the foul down here, though. I think they're going to sub him out, which is tough. Tough break, nice backdoor play, and the reverse layup is good. 37-25. Ronald Washington with nine early points. That was a beautiful backdoor play. Yeah, and another breakdown on the Queensboro side. They lost concentration. Aubrey, and the Tigers haven't slowed down the game as much as I thought they would. Aubrey, floater is good. 37-27. Nice touch for Aubrey. He's a, he's a very uh, good player, Aubrey. He gets the motor running when he comes in the game. There's Washington. No basket. A blocking foul before the shot was taken. That's the sixth team on Queensborough as Jordan Chateau was getting ready to go in for the Tigers. That's the fifth team foul on the Tigers, so there'll be no shooting. And checking in for the uh, good game so far. Good game for the fans. 37-27. Uh, Broncos trying to keep them at arm's distance. Tigers trying to edge their way back in. Fake the corner three, and that was the second foul on Ojugbele. So now OJ and McFarlane have two apiece. Broncos reset it. It's Berlin Guy Felix with the ball. Ross. Good passing team. And here's Washington, jumper is good. And a good shooting team tonight <laughs> too. Washington leading all scorers with the 11 points and the Broncos lead the Tigers 39-27. Here's Aubrey. I'd have to say the Broncos shooting percentage has been good in the first half. Mm -hmm. Don't have the numbers here. Here's Chateau inside. And Chateau's hook is an air ball. Broncos ball under three minutes to play. Yeah. And they when you should tell when you get that ball down there, you have to keep feeling for the defender behind you. He lost where the defender was, so he shot the ball over the basket on that hook. That'll be a two-shot foul. He's fouled in the act of shooting. You never want to do that as a defender. The Queensboro baseball team is coming up. Yes. Defending CUNY champions. Supporting the basketball team. They will team. try to support their basketball uh, cohorts. First free throw is too long. Well, Ronald Ross at the line. And, uh, you know, they played very well in the first half. Uh, let's not take anything away from Bronx. They've put the pressure on Queensboro. 40-27, Ross now has 11 points. Bronx offense in the last game scored 31 first half points against BMCC. 
and then exploded for 45 in the second half. They've already scored 40, still 236 to go in the first. They have a lot of people to shut off. They're not a one-song uh, one team. They, they have many people to go to. Here's Aubrey. And Carl Benjamin is back in for Queensboro. Now Abunce is in for the Tigers as well. Aubrey, good ball denial. Now Abunce has it. He's double teamed. His hook is off. And Light couldn't get the rebound. Broncos have the ball. Washington will walk it up and cross half court. Bronx has been able to do a better job against the Bunce and OJ tonight than uh, the team the other night Hostos was. Washington for three, it's off. That would have hurt right there. Made a very nice move in the pass and then got it back but couldn't hit the shot as Aubrey nearly lost the handle on it. And now does. Went right through the legs of Benjamin. And the Broncos score again, it's 42-27. Very tough, David. They were down by 13. You can't afford the, uh, the lackluster play right now. Turn the ball over, you gotta go back at it. They'll need a good, very strong 80 seconds to finish the half. Aubrey, Singleton, We're on the outside. Now he goes inside. And a charge is called. They got that call the other night. They didn't get it here. <laughs> so the tide has turned against them a little bit. They're down by 15. They're going to be in a similar position that Hostos was in the other night coming into yeah. the second half. And uh, they're going to have to once again get that jacked up and play out of their minds in the second half if they want this game. So you talked about getting the call singleton. They were down 56-55 with five seconds left. and. It was contacting, they called a blocking foul, not a charge on Singleton. You know, if you're Coach Holford, you have to remind this team, you know, we won a game the other night, but we didn't win the tournament yet. So, you know, he did a lot of celebrating, I'm sure. That was a major win for yes, this team. For the program, no matter what happens tonight. And here's Fernandez, they're down to seven on the shot clock. Jumper from the free throw line is off glass and in. It's 44-27. Jamal Celeste now has six points. Broncos up by 17. Just about everybody has scored for the Broncos, some more heavily than the other. Oh, so nice pass to Abunse, White from the free throw line. It rims out, Good and job. Benjamin gets it back. They could hold for the final shot. Instead, he shoots, and his shot is blocked. And the Broncos will get one more possession. There's one where maybe he should have taken it out. Yeah, the Tigers look like they're playing to get out of the half. That's what they look like right now. They just want to get out of the half. Here's Fernandez. Nice pass, Celeste in corner three, and he's fouled. And he'll go to the line for three. It was John Peloso who fouled the shooter, and Peloso puts his hands on his hips. He knows he made a mistake. Remember, Peloso hit a three-pointer to put the Tigers up 3 nothing, and that was the high point of the half for them. That was the high point, at yes, because they haven't had the lead for a long time. First free throw is off. They still have two and eight, ten seconds left if they have any uh, full court plays. Now would be the time. You, you got to hand it to Bronx and Steve Kelly. Doesn't look like to, uh, uh, Sean Kelly. Doesn't look like there's been much drop off in their play tonight. No. Since last year. 45-27. <laughs> but that's what good programs do. They'll come mm -hmm. in here. They have that success behind them. You know they've been successful, and they get good players again and they reload and you have to come out hard against them. 46-27. Aubrey will try to beat the buzzer and Holford tells him not to shoot but to hold it because he wanted to make sure he didn't lose the ball to the Broncos. A very tough first half for the Tigers. They go into halftime down by 19, 46-27. Broncos lighting it up. It's all a learning experience right now for the Tigers. Even the other night was a learning experience. You have to see how far you can be pushed. And Hostos pushed them, and they were able to come out on top. Now tonight, they've been pushed, pushed, and pushed some more. So they're going to have to come from behind. And uh, this could be a long second half, or it can get a bit interesting before it's over. Coach Holford knows his Tigers really 
weren't a second half team during the regular season so he was happy when when they blew that 15 point lead they didn't well they hung in there and they ended up winning in overtime well they're gonna have to be a second half team tonight <laughs> that's for sure so we'll see if the Tigers could get it turned around in the second half. After 20 minutes, the Broncos lead 46 27. Broncos leading the Tigers 46 27, beginning of the second half. Ronald Washington and Rennell Ross leading the way for the Broncos with the 11 points apiece. Tigers' high scorer is Andre McFarlane with six. The tail is in the shooting stats, David. Yes. If you look at the uh, yes. Broncos, 17 of 27 in the first half, a phenomenal 63%. And you have to understand, a lot of those shots came from outside. They took how many three-pointers? Nine three-pointers, they hit five of them. They hit a lot of two-pointers, and they hit a lot of backdoor-type plays. Washington with 11, Ross with 11 on the Tigers' side. They got no more than six from McFarland. And the foul is called on Chris Aubrey. Broncos with the transition opportunity right away. Well, they have to uh, buckle down immediately and stop the Bronx on about four or five possessions in a row to work their way back in this game. And here's Washington going baseline. Pass was deflected away, but the Broncos end up with it. Fernandez, we'll see if the Broncos slow it down a little bit and try to shorten the game. They're up by 19 with 19 and a half minutes to go. Sometimes you encounter difficulty when you do that. I and must tell you. Yeah, and here's Turner who blows the layup. And now the Broncos are coming back the other way. And Fernandez dribbled out and dribbled in, and the floater is good. And the Broncos lead by 21, 48-27. Fernandez with nine points now. That's not good. <laughs> not if you're Queensboro. And it's Turner. Spin move. Nice pass to OJ, and Ojugbele can't put it in. Shots aren't going down for the Tigers. And you wonder when they start to press. They're down 21 in the second half. They're going to have to start forcing the action, Joe. They're going to have to do that. Talk about pressing. They are pressing, too. When they're going to the basket, they're missing some easy shots right now. There's an air ball, and the ball goes to Queensboro. Nice effort by Washington to save it in, but couldn't do so. They basically have to take advantage of every opportunity right now for, I'd say, about eight minutes. That's what they have to do. To or 18 and a half. To get back in this game. Because you bring up they're down 21, you may set a goal of let's cut it to 10 with 10 minutes to play. Or even 10 with 6 minutes to play. Yeah, to do that, you're going to have to play out of your mind a little bit. And you're going to have to make shots, which Turner cannot do there. And now Washington is fouled by Singleton. And it's funny, if you look at the first half stats, Joe, you know, uh, Bronx only outscored them in the paint 16-12. They only outscored them on fast breaks 3-2. And Queensboro's bench outscored theirs 19-4, but the Broncos have just been executing so well in the half yeah, court. Look at the assist totals, 11 for the Broncos, 4 for Queensboro. They've gotten everybody involved, Dave. That, that has played a role. Ojugbele lays it in, defense leading to offense. 48-29. Tigers not pressing, 18 minutes to play. And Broncos will walk it up, it's Fernandez with the ball. OJ with four points now. Fernandez in no hurry. Now he makes his move, Washington for three. And it's off to the side. Aubrey with it for Queensboro. Aubrey. A lot of speed, and Aubrey can't finish. The tip-in is no good either. Broncos come out with it. But they don't have the numbers, and Washington, now he goes to the basket, and is fouled. Foul against Queensboro. That will be two shots. Every time you make a mistake now, it just gets compounded so badly. And uh, they made some mistakes in that first half, too. They turned over the ball a few times. They turned it over Queensboro 12 times. 
Third foul on Singleton. We'll see how long Holford stays with him. He's guarding the inbounds. And here's Ross outside to Washington. Fernandez now with it. Fernandez being guarded by Singleton. Nice pass inside. Ross's move, his shot is blocked, and then he touches it last. Ball to the Tigers. Tigers will get it, and I'm gonna mark down 17-16, because if they don't start making a move now, this mm -hmm. is gonna be very, very difficult to do. They're down 19 with about 17 minutes to play. And here's Singleton. Nice move on Fernandez, and his jumper is an air ball. And then he gets it back, and the blocking foul is called. Good job, go after the ball, be aggressive, and hope some things uh, change a little bit. You, you gotta make a change in the context of what's going on. Uh, it's been so well balanced for Bronx, you gotta get them out of that comfort zone they're in. They're just doing whatever they wanna do. First is good, it's 48-30. I was going to make a funny comparison at the beginning of the second half, which I was reminded of the other night. The Tuesday night win against Hosto somewhat reminded me of the Miracle on Ice, Joe. USA beating the Soviet Union, but people forget that was not the gold medal game. The USA is at 48-31 now. The USA hockey team still had to beat Finland two nights later, which everybody overlooks. Singleton now with seven points. Yeah, you know, to carry that effort right back the next time is not easy either. Corner three is long, but rebounded by Ross. Bronx could reset it now, should reset it now. And they're playing a totally different type of team tonight. This team, uh, they have uh, athletes, a lot of athletes. Well, so did Hostos. But yeah, but these <laughs> athletes are attacking, mm -hmm. tough, and uh, dependable. Here's Ross down low, posting up. Now back outside, Felix, long pass. They're down to five on the shot clock. Fernandez can't hit, rebounded by McFarland. All right, the game at 17 now. Let's see if they can make an indentation here. Singleton to Aubrey. It's a pretty small team for Queensboro. Aubrey. Had it deflected by uh, Bronco. Brighty's three is no good. And McFarlane saves it into light. Good job by McFarlane again with the outreach to get to that ball. Singleton. Nice pass underneath. The Tigers put it in. It's 48-33. Eric White with his first points of the night. 15-point game. And here's Fernandez. Nice pass. Celestin puts it in off glass. They answer right back and it's 50-33. Celestin now with 10 points. They've done that a lot tonight. They'll answer right back. 50-36. Singleton from downtown. He now has 10 points. First Tiger in double digits and the Broncos come right back. 52-36. Brunel Ross now with 13 points. This is looking like uh, some Paul Westhead basketball. Yeah. Tigers feeling a little bit on the offense, but they uh, still haven't done anything defensively against. Singleton corner three, counted and a foul. Singleton can go to the line to finish a four point play. And you never want to foul the jump shooter, Joe. That's 13 for Singleton, by the way. What a huge basket, a four point play. How big is that for the momentum? It is very big. Uh, the Tigers, in fact, can use every advantage they can get. Now they're within 13 in this ball game. Not a very good foul by Celestin. Ball was basically out of Singleton's hands, and he ran by and fouled him. And now Singleton can finish the four-point play. And does, it's 52-40 now. Number Singleton hit the game-tying free throw with four seconds left. Broncos lead is down to 12, and a turnover. Tigers with numbers. And it's down to 10, 52-42. Timeout is called. Shades of the first game right now. 
Except the reverse, now it's Queensboro coming back. It's a 10 point game. Troy Singleton with 16 points. And Sean Kelly calls timeout, a much needed timeout. Well, they have to feel a lot better now in that Queensboro huddle as compared to the way they came into the half. And in the Bryant huddle, Sean Kelly is trying to calm his team down, get them back on that path they were in on the first half when they shot 17 of 27. We're working the back door. We're working the outside on the jumper when they didn't have the back door available. Let's see what they go to now. Being pushed a little bit. And they got the Queensboro crowd back into it. Certainly have. 10 point game right now. This has been an exciting tournament. Even the Queensboro Hostos women's game was good yesterday. They've all been good games. Hey, how about the championship game that preceded this? The MCC nearly blowing an 18 point lead but holding on to win their seventh title. First under Veronica Sherman, congratulations to her. First time they've won one in a while too. Since 03. And she played on, I believe, on the last one that won one, so. Yeah, congratulations to Veronica Sherman. You don't mind seeing a player go from their team that they won a championship with to become head coach and carry that tradition forward. She, of course, uh, played for Rodney Carr here, and she adds a championship right up there with him. The Queensboro already sets up their defense. Not They will not press right now. 14 and a half minutes to play, and it's already down to a 10 point game. We said they should try to cut it to 10 with 10 minutes or six minutes to play. Defense stand starts up in the bleachers, and they're in a matchup zone. Three pointer is off and rebounded by the Tigers. Chris Aubrey slows it down a bit. Aubrey. Down to 20 on the clock, doing a lot of dribbling. Now he dribbles out. In a 1-4 offensive set, Aubrey to the basket. Last touch by the Broncos. Tigers keep it with 12 on the shot clock, but Joe, not a lot happening there. Well, they fortunately get the ball back, and there's time on that clock now, 13.48 to go. They can try to get within eight points here. Aubrey inbounding, gets it in. And the shot is blocked from behind. Excellent recovery by the Broncos. And now they push. Rennell Ross thought about the three. Now he takes it and misses. Offensive rebound. And the Broncos will reset. No foul called. Three pointer by Sanchez is no good. And the Tigers will get it. You can't keep up that hot shooting. Yeah, McFarlane, McFarlane vying for that rebound, making it difficult to pull it in. That gives the ball back to Queensboro here. The Tigers trying to make it a single digit game. They got to get it across. And they do, and it's Bridie. Jumper is good. Dwayne Bridie makes it 52 44. It's down to an eight point game. And still 13.05 to play. Broncos trying to push it back into double digits. Good defense by Light. Derek Fernandez with it. Nice pass and the three pointer is no good. Aubrey running. Aubrey. Floater is no good. And the Broncos come away with it. Fernandez up ahead. Ross puts it in off glass. And Brighty overran him. Rennell Ross with the big basket, it's a 10 point game. Oh. Ross with 15 points. Queensboro cannot let that affect them too much. They have to lock right back in here. No, I thought it was a good point. Coach Holford mentioned that they're not really a second half team, but they stayed strong the other night and traveling is called on McFarland. Ball back to the Broncos with 12.20 to go. And Singleton goes to the bench with his 16 points. And really loud in here, David. And Queensboro and has to uh, be able to maintain this now because they still have some ways to go. Let's see if they can, especially defensively. Nice pass down low. 
and Thompson puts it in. I don't think Thompson noticed that he had the good look right away, but then he put it in. 56-44, Broncos lead is back up to a dozen. Thompson who had four in the first half getting his first field goal there. It's Carl Benjamin, Tuesday night's hero back in. Benjamin, nice fake and his shot is good. Carl Benjamin makes it 56-46, his first points of the night. Broncos lead and the pass is overthrown. Ronald Washington throws it away. Ball back to the Tigers. Well, <laughs> that magic of the Tigers, they'll see if it can last here. 11.26 to go. They took a lead that was 46-27 at halftime. Bronx extended it more. Now they made it a 10-point lead, and you said it. If they could get it down to 10 with about 11 minutes to go, they stand a chance in this game. That's what they've done. As Bridie double triple teamed out to Aubrey for three. Got it! Chris Aubrey from downtown and it's 56-49. Seven point game. Broncos on their heels a bit now. Fernandez nearly overthrew that pass. Ross back outside. Here's Sanchez outside to Fernandez. Sanchez guarded by Aubrey. Fernandez, it's a two man game right now. Ross. Guarded by Light, he goes to the basket and he's fouled. A very smart play by Rennell Ross not to just jack up a shot, but a smart aggressive play and gets to the line for two. Let's see if they got McFarlane on that one. Well, there were a couple of Queensboro Tigers there. They wouldn't let him get it to the basket, so he did pump. Found a way to get it up and get fouled, and that will send Ronnell Ross to the free throw line. He was one of three at the line in the first half. First is good, it's 57 49. Ross now with 16 points. I can see him there, 57 49, it's an eight point game. Make it a nine point game. I will. <laughs> 58-49. Or he will. <laughs> Here's Aubrey. And who was that pass intended for? Broncos coming back the other way. Fernandez. Outside, three-pointer. No good. That would have been huge for the Broncos. Singleton with it. Came back in for the Tigers. And now Chris Aubrey handling the point guard duties crosses half court. Hand, tried to hand off to Bridie. Good defense by Ross. And Ross comes away with it. Washington. No foul is called. Tigers have it. Bit of a helter skelter pace. Halfway through the second half, it's 58 49 Bronx. Yeah, they're only nine points down right now, the yeah. Tigers. And now they're slowing it down a bit. Holford tells Bridie to go. Here's Bridie trying to back down Daniel Sanchez. And Bridie, jumper is good. Wayne Brighty makes it 58-51. Bronco ball, it's Derek Fernandez now. He's looking to get in a double-digit scoring, but first, Sean Kelly calls timeout with 9.35 to play, and a 21-point lead is down to seven. Almost a complete reversal here in the second half. The Tigers have held Bronx down. Bronx was scoring at a good clip in that first half, but the game is being played on the defensive end once again for the Tigers. Broncos, they've done a very nice job. Broncos with only 12 points in the first 10 minutes and 25 seconds of the second half. Their offense has stagnated somewhat. And also you can't keep shooting the way they were shooting in the first half. That is so difficult to maintain for 40 minutes. Well, maybe this is a little bit of a magic run for Queensboro right now. It already is. Once they won the other night. They'll come back on the court with McFarlane, Bridey, Aubrey. And the... Uh, Benjamin. Number 20 is Eric Light. Eric Light. I think this would be a good time for Bronx to run one of their backdoor plays. Carl Benjamin, number two. Go ahead. Worked for them successfully in the first half. Fernandez splits the defenders. Three pointer is good. A huge three pointer, and it's 61 51. 
Ronald Washington from downtown, and it's a double-digit lead again. There's Bridie. Bridie makes his move on Sanchez, and the jumper is good. Dwayne Bridie does it again at 61-53. Teams trading baskets. Yeah. Tigers can't afford to do that much longer, though. They're yeah, going to need some stops. Uh, Tigers hanging in there, though. Fernandez, they're pretty far away from the basket. And you said some teams have trouble when they start slowing it down. You said that early in the second half when it was still a 19-point game. Last touch by the Broncos, and it goes to QCC. Now, they are definitely having trouble at a slower clip right now. They are not attacking as they were earlier. They're not finding that back door as easy and available as they did. And, of course, uh, they have not shot the ball as well in the second half either. A lot of rhythm for a team that is big and athletic such as this. And right now, Queensboro has them off their rhythm. Whether they can close the deal, that's another story now. They're going to have to go a little further. Eight-point game, 840 to play, and Chris Aubrey handling the basketball. Let's go, Tigers fan starts up in the bleachers. Bridie with the ball, he's hit the last two shots. Nice move by Bridie, and his jumper is short. McFarlane with the rebound, but he couldn't hit. Broncos come away with it. Big miss there, it's Ronald Washington with the ball. Outside, Fernandez. Running a bit of clock now. They reverse the ball. They're down to 14 on the shot clock, under eight minutes to play in the game. Fernandez goes inside. Aubrey got a hand on the pass and tipped it away. Two CC ball. Brighty. Shot is blocked by Ross. Fernandez saves it, but he steps on the line. Ball to Queensboro. Well, Ross stepped in at just the right time, made the block. They turned it back the other way, but they step out of bounds. Unfortunate mistake there uh, to give the ball back to Queensboro. A foot on the line may have cost the Broncos two points. And Aubrey now. Now we're down to 741 though, David. Clock is a major factor going forward. McFarlane, no whistle is blown. McFarlane couldn't hit, got his own rebound and put it in. 61-55. Broncos right back the other way. Fernandez to the basket, misses. The tip-in is good. Nobody bucks out, Jamal Celestin, and Fernandez goes down with an injury. He's in pain. Well, Celestin, a terrific athletic play, followed that play in and went to the glass hard and was able to tip it home. How many for McFarland now? I have him for 12. McFarland, I have him for eight. You have 12? Well, let's put him at yeah. 10. Yeah. Split the difference, and now Fernandez gets up. After McFarland made a big play, they came back the other way, and you have to give credit to Jamal Celestin, very yeah. good athlete. He got into that lane and made the play to give it an eight-point edge again to the Bronx. And I think the Tigers' defense expected Fernandez to dribble out, and then he surprised him and threw the defense off by attacking the basket, and when he missed, Celestin was in position for the offensive rebound and the basket. And now Queensboro has it with 7.21 to go, down 63-55. Five on the court for the Tigers right now. Eric Light, Chris Aubrey, who has the ball, Dwayne Bridey, Troy Singleton, and Andre McFarlane. It's a small lineup. Here's Bridey. Bridey carrying the offense as of late. Singleton's three is good! It's a five-point game. 63-58. Twenty-one point lead is down to five. How Time many, out. Uh, how many for Singleton? I have him for twenty. Oh, I got him nineteen. Nineteen. All right, I'll put nineteen. I was uh. gonna give him twenty. I had sixteen before that three, so it is nineteen. Oh boy. This one is definitely now in reach. And it's uh, within reach because the Tigers have never given up in this game. They just flat out yeah. refuse to quit in must this have been, game. Must have been quite the halftime speech by Robert Holford. Who's 
won a few CUNY championships of his own in 04 and 05, a team that won the national championship. He can fire you up. And uh, he has his team fired up at the level they were playing at the other night. This is the team, again, we saw the other night. They resurfaced. Yeah. That team was not here in the first half, by the way. No. Bronco ball, they only lead by five. Defense! Trying to come all the way back from a 21-point deficit. Good defense by Light. And Joe, you called it correctly early on. Broncos having a bit of trouble in the slow down offense. Here's Ross being guarded well by Benjamin. Fernandez thought about the three. They're down to six on the shot clock. Celestin for three and got it. Wow. A huge three pointer by Jamal Celestin and it's 66 58. 625 to go. That's his second big play in the last uh, 40 seconds. And here's Bridie. Down low, pass intended for McFarland is knocked away. Fernandez. Corner three for Ross. It's good. Rennell Ross from downtown. Back to back threes for the Broncos, and it's an 11 point game. Oh, how, uh, how well can you bounce back? Branch bounce back from that run by Queensboro. They met it tough now with 5.48 to go. And the whistle is blown before the basket. Blocking foul, but no continuation. It's about Sean Kelly's timeout. What a good one. And Celestin and Ross hit threes to make it in the 11-point game. Oh, he said it many times. Uh, Bronx is loaded with some players. They have uh, two or three spots to go to four spots to go to and Celestin has stepped up in these last couple of minutes and there's a rare whistle it's been a pretty fast second half already down to 545 to play and nearly a steal tough inbound pass there good job by Celestin to get the hand in on it and they'll need a safer inbounds play Aubrey is talking to McFarland but he needs to size it up himself you do not try to throw an, a bounce pass on that inbound right there because it can be picked off very Singleton quickly. all alone and hits how do you leave Troy Singleton alone of all people 69 61 that's the way you run an inbounds play and that's 22 points for Troy Singleton these guys have played a great tournament for Queensboro. <laughs> Kept them close here tonight. It's an eight point game. Three pointer again is no good. Tipped and rebounded offensively. Fernandez missed down low. And no foul called. Aubrey with it for Queensboro. Up ahead, Singleton, spin move. Good defense. And Aubrey is fouled by Fernandez. That's the fourth team foul against Bronx this half. There'll be no shooting. Uh, no, not yet. Eight point lead for Bronx, so Queensboro needs a good shot right here. There's Singleton to the basket and the layup is good. Now the Bronx Snyder fell down. 69, 63 and 24 for Singleton. And a charge, ball to QCC. 4.48 to go. Fernandez fell down, David, and Singleton went to the glass hard. Now they turn it over down here, so Bronx hurting themselves, and that'll give Queensboro a chance to move back within shooting range here. And what I mean by that is either a two or a three, and you get yourself right back in the ball game. And now a bit of full court pressure by the Broncos. Ross with his back to the inbounder. They get it in to Chris Aubrey. Aubrey being guarded by Fernandez. Have to avoid a 10 second violation. And they just do. Light, hands off. It's Singleton. He's been the main man. There's Singleton to Aubrey. Four and a half to play. Righty. Down to 10 on the shot clock. White puts up a three. No good. Rebounded by Fernandez. Queen 
is going to a smaller, quicker lineup. It's paid dividends, but right now it's yeah. a six-point game. And they've stayed away from their bigs this half, and it really hasn't hurt them that much on the offensive or defensive boards. There's Gronk's outside. Celestin, another three, and it's good. A huge three-pointer by Jamal Celestin. 72-63. He stepped up big time. He's made three clutch baskets. Yes. And I, I think uh, Coach uh, Holford said, I want to get a quicker lineup out there to contend with their athleticism. It has worked to a certain extent. Now they need to shoot the ball and try to answer back here. Three and a half minutes to play. Aubrey, the singleton. They're down to 10 on the shot clock. He's got to make a move. Singleton. And a blocking foul is called. That will be a two-shot foul, a chance to take some points off the lead without time coming off the board. They've spaced out several times. They've given Singleton those one-on-one -on -one opportunities. He's taken the ball hard to the basket. And as I said, it has paid off. But you have to wonder whether there's enough time right now for Queensboro. And they're going to bring a couple of the bigs. Or they're going to bring at least McFarland back in. And they'll bring Peloso in, the shooter. Yeah, they want the downtown threat. They might need a quick in, inside play and then a quick three to uh, get back in this game in the mix. It looks like that anyway. I think that's what Robert Holford is thinking. <laughs> Trying to avoid a five-second violation. And that's the last touch by a Bronco who kicked it out, so Queensboro will try to inbound again. But you see the way the Celestin now has stepped up in the second half. They do have a horde of athletes on this Bronx team. They could also be using Peloso as a decoy to get something towards the basket. And McFarland, they try to wild play, and he'll go to the line for two. Well, there's the two you wanted, because now, down by nine, at least you got two free throws. They wanted the basket for McFarland there inside, make it an easier play. Because now it's going to be hard to defend, uh, uh, going to be hard to depend on the outside shot. You're down by nine. You need something to work with here. McFarland at the line for two. The first one is no good. Got to make those at this point. And now Peloso goes to the bench. Some offense defense substitutions by Holford. Mixing and matching the final 320 of regulation. And he wants his defensive guys to get up, I believe. There are no other Tigers in position for a rebound in case he misses, which he does. And a bit of half court pressure. See if Bronx takes it out, and they can run it under three minutes to play here. And Fernandez is telling him to spread it out. Aubrey is right up on him. Now you want to use clock if you're Bronx. That clock is your ally right now. Fernandez with the crossover. The left-handed layup, counted and a foul. Derek Fernandez makes it 74-63. You see, David, if you use a little clock, spread it out, you get a one-on-one -on -one situation, and then it becomes tough for Queensboro to defend. And uh, Fernandez took advantage of it, went hard and drew the foul. Fernandez now in double digit scoring and, the, uh, and now Peloso goes back in for Queensboro. Let's not downplay that contribution by Celestin. That no. might have been the biggest contribution of the night right there. Think, uh, not just three pointers, but three pointers when they badly needed them, when the momentum was slipping through their hands. Fernandez will try to finish the three point play and does. 75-63. The Broncos fans can taste a three-peat. It's less than three minutes away. A three-peat. Aubrey, left hand, no good. Second chance points, no good. Another chance, McFarland puts it in. 75-65. By the way, not many teams have been able to do that three-peat thing in the men's. And that was a risky play by Fernandez to take the shot five seconds into the shot clock, but he'll go to the line for two. We remember Queensboro had a three-peat and more. Yeah, a five-peat. 94 through 98, and then they added the sixth title in 03. Hostos had a little run there, but nobody else has been able to win them year after year. Hey, here's a little trivia. You know who coined the phrase three-peat? You got me on that one. Pat Riley. When there his, you go. When his Lakers won in 87 and 88, he coined three-peat as Fernandez makes the first. That kind of night for Bronx. Thinking if they win in 89, they would three-peat. His Lakers didn't. 
but he later made money when the Bulls repeated twice in the 90s, even though he wasn't coaching them. Even when, he, even when Pat Riley loses, he wins. Well, he's an outstanding uh, basketball guy. There's no doubt about that. And he was part of that Jerry Buss era there in uh, Los Angeles. And Jerry Buss, of course, passed away the other day. And a turnover. And how about another outstanding coach, Sean Kelly, who's two minutes and 25 seconds away from winning his first CUNY championship. And the foul is committed by Singleton. Sorry, Joe. On his dad's home court. Yes. Although we don't want to throw that in there too many times because we don't want to downplay what Kelly has accomplished. But his dad has been, uh, I, I guess, his role model to a certain extent. He's right. coached with him at times. Yep. And, uh, he certainly is a good young coach, and um, yeah. it'll be interesting to see how far he can go with the Bronx program now if he does win this one. Well, and for Robert Holford, of course, he'll be shooting after him next year, no doubt about it. Same about Queensboro when they had Jerry Powell as the free throws off leave after two CUNY titles, and then Tom Sinnickson won three in a row. So Shannon McKinnon leaves Bronx after two. Looks like Steve Kelly might be on his way to his first. Queensboro needs points and they need them fast. Well, Tom Sinnickson reminds you never to be a cynic son. <laughs> you know, if another Take guy comes down. in, he can have more uh, success than the guy before him. And we'll see if Queensboro starts fouling with 2.02 to play. That was a play on words of the C-Y-N-I-C variety. Yeah. 77-65. Well, now Queensboro needs a few major plays right now. And they need to foul. Nice dribbling by Ronald Washington, and Benjamin commits the foul. With 1.57 to play. Well, we were wondering if Bronx was pushed, how the cohesiveness would be, uh, although we've talked about they have a lot of athletic talent out there. Uh, they haven't been together for more than one year. So yeah. if you're pressed and you're pushed in a game of this magnitude, would it hold together? Yeah. It is held together. They've done a very good job under the conditions. And you're rarely ever together for more than a year. You get two maximum at this level, 78-65. Washington hits the first. And how about, I think the turning point, it was a 21-point game early in the half. It went down to five, 63-58, and Sean Kelly calls a timeout. And Jamal Celestin and Rennell Ross both hit three-pointers to push it back up to 11. And right now it's 79-65, and Bronx can taste the title. Well, you know, Dave, uh, more than the coach sometimes, when you build a program, you got a recruiting base. Guys start coming to your program, and that's what they have right now at Bronx. They're getting good ball players, and that's not going to stop. What the other coaches have to do is put their collective minds together and find a way to beat them. Oh, Bronx is the team to beat, which is funny because they won 4-4 four and four in the regular season in CUNY and Hostos went 8-0, but it's Bronx who's going to win the title. be interesting to see what a guy like Hassan Duncan is doing this year. You know, he had to yeah. take a year off, maybe more because of health reasons, but you know, Hassan was never afraid to face anybody in this final no. game in his years at Kingsborough, and uh, Hostos is going to... I, I should say uh, Holford's going to be the same here at Queensboro. There's no doubt about that. 80-65, how exciting is the CUNY Conference going to be next year? The first year of LaGuardia, Duncombe trying to bounce back, Michael Kerr going forward to BMCC, Sean Kelly will try to repeat in Holford. I think it's going to be pretty exciting around Queensboro next year to watch these uh, guys continue. 81-65, this mirrors Holford's first year. You have his first year at Hostos. They lost the CUNY title game. They but, did. But then they won it the next year. In his first year at Queensboro, they make the CUNY title game against all odds. I said he brought in marvelous Marvin Lynch and uh, Donald Henney and uh, just ripped up the conference the next year. Next year, Queensboro not might get to this game. They might be the class of the league coming into this tournament. You never know. I think Cole Tolford senses it's over right now. And he's going to, this is nice, I really like this, Gold Schultz a class act, putting Rafael Yusupov in the game, Brian Nation, guys who wouldn't otherwise get in, guys who didn't play the other night. 
and they played sparingly this year, yeah, but you, they went to all the practices. You want to let everybody get a taste of being out here on the court in the final second. Yeah, you know, from 85, 85 with a minute to go, they wouldn't be out there, but it's nice. It's a Boonse, Guam Davis, Rafael Yusupov, Nolan Emery, and Brian Nation, and this is the final CUNY game for Nation and Yusupov. They still have the regional playoffs. They're going to be the eighth seed. That'll well, be interesting to see what they can do well, there, too. Uh, they'll be against Sullivan, and we know they like taking down the big favorites, the number one seeds. And we'll see what they do against Sullivan, if they can put on a really big show in that tournament. Fernandez misses and gets his own rebound, and another foul. 114 to play. Did you catch that one? Is it in your time frame at all? I said, we'll see if they can put on a really big show against Sullivan. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll explain it to you later. 83-65, <laughs> the Magic came up a little short for Queensboro. Yeah, it did. I mean, they, uh, uh, they gave their all, David. I yeah. mean, they got back to within, what, four in this five. game? Five. And uh, they looked like maybe they were going to do it again. But uh, Maybe if they came out a little better in the first half, you never know. You it's expend so bad. much energy, yeah. too. And, and Yusupov for three. No good. Couldn't get the Carl Benjamin roll. And here's Brian Nation. Guam Davis for three. Be nice to get some of these guys in the scoring column, say they scored in one of these playoff games. And traveling is called. Well, uh, I think they've done it all. Holford is getting the guys in. He, he wants them to see the court in this final game here in the CUNY. And then they'll work, uh, of course, towards that next game that they have, as you said, with Sullivan. They will try to win one of those tournament games if they can. They will practice very hard. And they have a lot to be proud of coming out of the arena tonight. Yeah, and there was not a traveling call. The ref just signaled it. I don't know what that was. But I think that win against Sosos will go a long way. And there's got to be a feeling of, hey, we were by close. Way, we yeah. were down by five points with a few yeah. minutes to go in the CUNY championship game. By the way, I was talking to Jody King before a few times. And uh, he's going to play a tournament game, I think, in a couple of days. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they want to go far in that tournament also. So they're not finished yet. And then Brian Nation makes it 83-68. Nice to see Nation get in the scoring column. And I don't think the final score is really indicative. No, it's That's not. how close this was. You might hear from Hostos again, by the way, in right. that tournament. But, but this night is about the Bronx Broncos as Sean Kelly is high-fiving his guys on the sidelines. It's a three-peat for the Bronx, and they beat the Tigers 83-68. Kind of anticlimactic if you're a Tiger fan. You wanted them to be able to take it the rest of the way, but... I think their championship game took place here the other night, really, yeah. for the most part. And in the second half here tonight, they showed that it really wasn't any kind of magic that they wove on Hostos. They played hard, and uh, they came up a bit short tonight. As David said, the score does not indicate it. What an effort that uh, Tigers gave it in the second half. You won't find that out from the final score. How about the 31-18 run they went on and to put a huge scare into the Broncos? But it the Broncos nice. answered the bell. Yeah. Give that kid Singleton a lot oh, of credit. Man. He keyed the comeback. We had shot after shot, big shot after big shot. It just shows you, though, how good you have to be to win two games of this magnitude in a row oh, yeah. and take the whole title. And uh, it's been a pleasure working with you. Yeah, First, same Bronx, here. Bronx continues to show that they have an excellent program and they're gonna be a tough team to beat when they come into the storm until they're eliminated. Yeah. And I hope uh, you'll be back on Queensboro games next year. As I hope the, so. As the Broncos celebrated half court, it's a three-peat and the first title under Sean Kelly. I'll tell you what, I hope I'm back when they play Bronx again at the, <laughs> uh, at the gym there because we'll oh, have yeah. a lot to talk about after this game. So congratulations to the Broncos. This is David Russell for Joe Massey. The Tigers go home without the title. It's the Broncos who three-peat.